Assalamu alaikum. And hello YouTubers. Pro2 is here. In this video, I will share with you guys on how to make a vacuum pump and a pressure pump using a fridge compressor. Pulling a vacuum is a common part of air conditioning repairs. Vacuums are used to evacuate ACs, a process by which they pull out all air and moisture from the refrigerant system. In order to remove all the unwanted moisture, a state of near vacuum has to be achieved in which the pressure in the system is forced to go below the atmospheric pressure. The absolute value of the atmospheric pressure at sea level is given by 29.92 inch of mercury or 14.696 pounds per inch 2 psi. This pump can be used to pull a vacuum on a car AC system and also it can pull a vacuum for an AC unit at home. We can use the pressure pump also. The pressure from this compressor will help us on finding leaks in a car AC system. And of course it can pump up balls and bicycle tires and so on. Remove some screw so we can take the wire. The pump I used was from a 5 year old fridge which stopped working when the refrigerant leaked out. The old owner accidentally punctured the freezer box and threw out the fridge. The compressor was in good condition. Before removing the compressor, make sure there is no refrigerant in it. Or you can release the refrigerant by attaching a perforating valve onto the process tube and then releasing it. Cut the tubing that goes in and out of the unit. Don't use a saw because the metal dust may enter the unit via the tubes and be a problem later on. Always wear goggles and gloves, work in a well ventilated area whenever you are discharging a refrigerant. Remove the clips that hold the compressor with pliers. Be careful not to spill any of the oil because these units will heat up quickly without adequate lubrication. And we done removing the compressor. To complete the process, we will require some tools and material. You need one quarter of an inch refrigerator access valve. A flux. Some rod. Copper tube cutter. Valve core remover tool. Hand gloves. Eyes protector. A wet towel. And a welding torch. Remove all the wire and plastic part before brazing. Cut the extra tubing. This copper tube will be soldered to all three tubes on the compressor. The valve cores otherwise known as Schrader valves should be removed from the ports. This is done so they do not melt or become damaged during the soldering or brazing process. Remove all inside and outside burrs with a reamer, file, 
or other sharp edge scraping tool. If tube is out of round, it should be brought to true dimension and roundness with a sizing tool. Sand down the tip of the tubing before brazing. Brazing only works properly only with clean metal surfaces, so sand down the tubing is a must. Install back all the wire and the plastic cover. Close the service valve. There are the three tubes, in, out, and process. This tube blows the air out. This one is vacuum. Now, we are testing the pressure and vacuum of the compressor. Pulling vacuum is the process of evacuating air conditioning system of all unwanted contaminants dirt, water and air. This is done by lowering pressure within the system to reduce the boiling point of water, at which point generally 27.75 inch of mercury vaporization occurs. The process of pulling vacuum is performed to rid the system of these potentially harmful substances to ensure that the refrigerant in the system has a clean, pure environment in which it can operate best. Not pulling proper vacuum can lead to premature corrosion, line restrictions, mechanical breakdown, lower efficiency and ultimate system failure. Looks good. It can vacuum almost 30 inch of mercury. This compressors can deliver over 400 pounds of air pressure psi far more than I ever need to fill a tire, charge a well tank, or even spray paint which would of course require the addition of a pressure storage tank to the pump. To done this leaking test, we need an air conditioning manifold gauge set with R134 fittings and a spray bottle with a soap and water solution. This blue gauge represents the low pressure side of the air conditioning system, and red represents the high pressure side. The yellow hose in the center is designed for refilling the AC system with canned refrigerant during recharging, 
and it can also be used for evacuating the system with a vacuum pump. The blue gauge and hose should connect to the low pressure service port. The red gauge and hose will connect to the high pressure port. The yellow hose in the middle should connect to the pressure pump. Make sure the gauges and gauge hoses are connected tightly. Open the low and high side valves on the adapter. Open the manifold valve. Turn on the pressure pump. Usually, there are two ways to find AC leaks. The first is a fluorescent dye you put into the system. The second type is I using gas sniffer. One last method to find leaks is with soapy water. Just spray the suspected area with a soap and water solution. If there's a leak, you'll see bubbles accumulate in the affected area. For me it's its very effective ways. We have found the leaking area. Usually the O-ring connection here are broken or harden. Because air conditioning hoses and O-rings are made of rubber. It is common for some of the AC refrigerant to work its way out of the system over a period of several years. To make it easier, first unplug the high pressure hose. Open the ECG valve so that there's some space to do reopening AC lines. Put a new O-ring and put a little oil on the O-ring. Reinstall the high pressure hose according to the torque of 9.8 newton meters or 7.8 foot pound. Reinstall the ECG valve. Put back the high pressure hose. And install the yellow hose on the vacuum. Start your pump. Once your vacuum is on, you will need to open the gauge valves. Located on the side of each gauge. This allows the vacuum to start pulling air out of the system. When the system is being evacuated, the needle will travel to the other side of zero to reflect negative pressure vacuum in the lines as shown here. Let the pump run for 30 to 60 minutes until you see the low side dial displaying a vacuum reading of 30 inches of mercury. After 30 minutes, close both high and low side valves and shut the pump off. Let it be for 15 minutes. If the system holds vacuum pressure without dropping for 15 minutes after being evacuated, there are no leaks in the system. A decline in pressure means there's a large leak somewhere or water in the system. You want to have on hand the exact amount of refrigerant specified by your vehicle's manufacturer. A sticker mounted in the engine compartment or on the underside of the hood will provide the refrigerant type of your vehicle. For Proton Weera you will find a sticker here. Refer to the AC information decal under the hood to make sure your AC system is a R134A system.
It's show here charging AC system with 600 to 650 gram of R134. Start the engine and turn on the AC. Connect the yellow hose to the gas R134 can. And open the valve on the can R134. Bleed air out of the yellow line so that it does not get pushed into the AC system. Do this by loosening the yellow hose fitting just a little at the top of the manifold gauge set until you hear air comes out for 2 seconds with both low and high side valves still closed. Open only the low side valve on the manifold. The compressor will start to engage automatically after the right pressure in the compressor. Caution! Opening the high side valve when the AC compressor is running will damage the compressor. This can with gas is 1000 grams. According to the label on this vehicle, the refrigerant should be put into this AC systems is about 600 gram. Filling 600 grams from 1000 grams of refrigerant. This means, the digital scale will show the remaining 400 grams if I weigh this after filling it on my AC system. There are scales which will give you the before and after weight, so that you know you've added the correct amount. This means I am charging this AC system by 650 grams. Still in spec. Getting a regular car maintenance checkup is vital to keep your AC system in its best condition and to prevent long term and more severe damage. Maintenance and thorough checkups of your AC system should ideally be done at least once a year. After all, prevention is better than cure. Until next time. See you again in the next DIY project. Pro 2 DIY. Bye bye. Use this information at your own risk. Any injury, damage, or loss that may result from improper use of any tools and equipment, or from the information contained in this video, the user must take responsibility. If you think this video helpful for you, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Enjoy cautiously and good luck. Pro2DIY